Hello and welcome to the second in my masterclass series on Copperhead. And in this video, we're going to go into a little bit more depth. Um, the first video was kind of a beginner's guide. Uh, this one is going to delve into a few more advanced features. But I'm going to try and keep on a level that beginners can understand and advanced users can uh, get something out of. So I want to start today looking at the LFOs and what the LFOs do. Now, we looked at uh, creating various um, uh, patches using the two oscillators, and we talked about the voltage control filters. The next most important thing is the LFO, and the LFO basically is a way of automating uh, parameters within the synthesizer uh, using a low frequency oscillator. And really the only difference between the VCOs and the LFOs, the low frequency oscillators, is that they work at a much lower frequency. So uh, whereas the VCOs need to provide a pitch, the LFOs need to provide an oscillation of some sort. So let's go through that now. Now Copperhead has a pair of LFOs and we're just going to play with uh, LFO 1 for now. Now the best way to um, show you this is to show you a sound without any LFO. But as you can hear it's a sound with a lot of resonance and that uh, allows us to hear what's going on when I start playing the LFO. So if I hold down the key now and play around with the amp button, you'll see as I raise that level, we get a kind of um, tremolo type sound. And the filter knob affects the cutoff frequency, so it's modulating the cut cutoff frequency. And as you can hear here, the pitch knob controls the pitch of either VCO 1, 2 or both, depending on this pitch control setting here. Now the attack knob controls how quickly the LFO takes effect, so if we have a very long attack, we get a fade in of the LFO. Now the frequency knob governs the speed of the uh, LFO and currently it's set to 8th notes and that's controlled by this sync button. If I disable this sync button uh, we can control it in hertz instead of uh, in note length. And uh, as you can hear, as I hold a key down, we can speed up and slow down that uh, LFO cycle. Now, just like VCO 1 and 2, we also have a wave shape. Currently it's on sine wave, but I'm going to go through various shapes and let you hear how they sound. But notice for this first example, the pitch controls on VCO1 only. So the LFO is affecting VCO1. Here I've changed the pitch control so that it affects both oscillators. Now the 
randomizer is great for creating random notes, but it's also great for filters. Now if you notice below the pitch, filter and amp knobs, we have an invert. Here's an example without the invert button pressed. And if we enable the invert button, we get... So it's essentially inverting the wave pattern. Now the LFO so far has been in continuous mode, in other words the, it's repeating every uh, X number of hertz or every so many beats. But we can also enable one shot mode which makes it only play once and then stop. And we do that by enabling this one shot option at the top of the LFO. <laughs> So this is really useful for adding uh, glides or additional trills to the beginning of notes. So let's give you an example. So it's probably more effective when we um, increase the frequencies so that it plays through faster. So hopefully you get the idea and you are beginning to realise how much of an important part an LFO plays in the sound created uh, by a synthesizer. Now there's just one button that I haven't touched on and that's the re-trigger button. And uh, basically if re-trigger is enabled then every key press we make the LFO starts at the same position within the wave. <laughs> But if we turn off the trigger button, you'll see that um, the, the LFO just keeps going blindly regardless of whether I am um, pressing keys or not. Now this is very useful in certain circumstances where you've got um, automation of a particular parameter and you don't want that. You want that to be a continuous sweep and not uh, related to key presses. Now I'd like to return to the VCO 1 and 2 and talk about VCO sync mode and what that does. Now I'm sure many of you have seen the sync button which is located between VCO 1 and 2 and uh, I can demonstrate it by uh, listening to this sound. <laughs> Now this uses two oscillators and if I detune uh, oscillator one by one semitone it sounds awfully out of tune. Now some tunings if we move to seven semitones or twelve semitones sound perfectly okay but not one. Which just sounds damn awful. But if we enable the sync button Listen to what happens. In fact, we can sit there and manipulate the, uh, the tuning for uh, oscillator one and uh, everything sounds in tune. does change is the tone 
and uh, I'm going to try and explain how that works now. So essentially when sync is enabled VCO2 becomes the master and um, every time VCO, the VCO2 completes a full cycle it resets uh, VCO1. As you can see here from this example the two uh, sorted waves are at different frequencies. But forcing uh, VCO1 to reset itself uh, brings it in sync with VCO2. And uh, you can create some nice textures and tones uh, using this. Now, sync mode doesn't always work uh, in conjunction with everything. And one of the things that uh, you're going to be careful with is with cross modulation. And that's the next topic I want to discuss. So what is cross-modulation, I hear you cry? Uh, and the answer is, it's a form of FM synthesis where we take the pitch of one uh, VCO and we modulate the pitch of another VCO. And um, it can create uh, totally different sounds. Now, for this example, I'm going to show you... Uh, I have two sine waves here in VCO1 and VCO2. And if I hit a note, um, we get a pure sine wave as expected. But if I hit a lower note, uh, you'll notice we can hardly even hear it. But listen what happens when we bring in the cross modulation. As you can see here, we can use an LFO to modulate uh, that cross modulation. Now, if I change VCO1 to be a square wave, uh, listen just to how gnarly it sounds. So there really is a vast array of sounds you can create using cross-modulation and uh, a lot of the patches that I've created uh, use cross-modulation but you've got to use it in a, in a careful way. Here we're using a different variety of cross-modulation using a fixed pitch and uh, it, it does sound quite different, and it, especially if we start detuning some of the oscillators. So obviously uh, that uh, can create some really strange sounds, and sometimes these sounds can get kind of out of control, um, there's, especially when using something like the formant filter, which mimics the human voice. Now, in such cases um, as this, you might want to limit the output uh, to ensure it doesn't uh, it doesn't peak too loud and to do that we can turn on the limiter if we long press the limiter button we get these uh, output options and on the far right we've got a threshold button that allows us to go anywhere from minus 1 to minus 12 db now we can also control the maximum polyphony in here uh, it defaults to 8, but we can go all, all the way up to 16. And if you want to conserve CPU, just drop it down as much as you need. And we can also enable the low and high shelf filters so that we can uh, we can cut out some of the high end if things are getting a little bit uh, ropey up top. And we can also uh, do some bass boosting or cutting if things uh, need addressing down there. So 
So now I want to take a look at some of the performance modes such as portamento and how to uh, select the monophonic and polyphonic voices. So here I've got a bass sound. Uh, I'm going to play a single note and then a chord. So to restrict this bass to a single note, we hit the mono button up at the top of the screen. Now notice when I play a low C and then press a, a high C and release that, uh, it re-triggers the bottom note again. But it also re-triggers the ADSR. So to disable the re-triggering of the ADSR, we turn on legato mode. Now another performance feature is the portamento, which is this knob here. But in mono mode we can enable porter slide, which allows us to only glide when we hold one key down and then press another. So I suggest you use those three buttons to dictate uh, your playing style and uh, if you are using monophonic don't forget to turn the polyphony down to save CPU. Now another important performance feature is the ability to uh, control various elements using the mod wheel and we can do that using this array of buttons down here. So I can control any one of these individually or control a whole bunch all at the same time. Now we've got nine buttons in here. Uh, if you uh, look in the settings menu, uh, you can see that there's a few more options available in here. But uh, it's nice to be able to quickly enable these things without having to go through any mappings. Now I wanted to take a look at the preset manager because I spent a lot of time and attention allowing you to share presets with friends. Now if we tap on the uh, preset name at the top here it will bring up the preset manager and everything is in bank group preset format. So um, we can create a new bank by clicking on the create bank and uh, when we create the bank uh, there'll be no groups currently so we can add a base group and then I can save the preset into that base group. Now we've just created a bank there and I'm going to show you how easy it is to export that bank. So if we bring up the uh, files app, the iOS files app and all we need to do is just drag that bank out of the preset manager and drop it into the files app and if we look it will create um, a directory structure containing all the presets and uh, importing back into the preset manager is just a case of dragging that folder back into the bank section. We could do the same with groups and we can do the same with presets. Now if we take a look at some of these presets you'll see a little star next to them and that means that they're favourites and we just double click uh, any um, file name to make that a favorite and if you notice there's a little favorites button up on the toolbar and we it gives us direct access to all our favorite presets so we don't need to go looking for them now if you want to search through the presets we'll just tap and hold all the preset name and we can type in something like base or apps or if we know the name we can type part of the name we want to search for so that's just about it for my second masterclass video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to thumb up this video. There'll be more to come soon. Thank you for watching.